Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. Now, I have not spoken publicly during our investigation. I'm speaking out today because our investigation is complete. The Attorney General has made the report on our investigation largely public. We are formally closing the Special Counsel's Office, and as well, I'm resigning uh, from the Department of Justice to return to private life. Get off my lawn. Now, I hope and expect this to be the only time that I will speak to you in this manner. I am making that decision myself. No one has told me whether I can or should testify or speak further about this matter. Did you hear me? I said get off my lawn now. You got it! Good evening, everyone. Welcome to New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith, bringing you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news, and giving you the real news every single night, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Hit the share, hit the like, share this with your friends and your family. If you're on the YouTubes, make sure you click the little bell for notifications. And right after our show is the Wayne Dupree Show. Absolutely just a great show to watch as well. Say welcome to all the new people on the show. Just real quick to kind of give you a rundown of how things work. If you look in the description below, there's a link that says full show notes. Click that. That'll take you over to newrightnetwork.com, and that'll take you over to where the, the all three, usually three pages show notes are, so that you can look and follow along with us, as well as an embed of the video so that you can share that page with anybody you want. And as we go through the show, the different names and the different players on Twitter that we highlight and showcase and we tell you who to follow, who not to follow. And there's a lot of great people tweeting out real information, real time news, great stuff. I couldn't do it without you guys. Absolutely. There's so much information packed into this show that if I literally did research by myself without your help, I don't think it could possibly be done. But, but the fact that you guys out there, you digital warriors, you're out there with me in the trenches making it happen. God, so God bless you. And uh, we keep moving forward for 2020 as we support the greatest president that we have ever seen. And also in the description below, you can see where there's a Patreon.com, a PayPal.com, and a Cash Me Out. <laughs> cash Me Outside is cash.me down in the description below. Folks, if you enjoy what you're hearing, click on one of the, the uh, options and help support new news media, real media to continue doing this. Your support is the only way that this show can possibly happen. We are totally self-funded and thanks to the Patreons. I sent you all out an email last night, just, just from the bottom of my heart, each and every one of you, I was a lot, a lot of emails I had to send out, but I sent out emails to each and every one of you. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done for us when we were with uh, Smith Radio throughout all the years there and then leading up here to Smith TV, uh, doing this for about six years now and just loving every minute of it. Uh, something I'm born to do. <laughs> just love doing this, uh, love digging in and finding the real news and then producing this and bringing this to you guys every single night. Uh, so down in the show notes, check all the links out. Also the parlor. I don't know, people call it a parlay. If it's parlay, P-A-R-L-E-R, -E if it's parlay, I don't know, man, I'm not French, but uh, it looks like it's spelled parlor, but it, whatever, parlor.com, parlay.com, in the link description below, follow us over there on the new social media platform. And today, as you can tell by the title of the show, Tuesday Thoughts, Trump winning, Nancy Pelosi losing, as Paul Manafort is now sent to Rikers Island. Oh my God, I... I you got me. I have no idea, but we'll get into that and in some of the articles about that. We've got some incredible Trump news that we're going to talk about. Exposing the fake news. Got a lot of it today as we lead right into the UK trip. Donald Trump, uh, world leader amongst leaders in the UK, showing the world uh, America, American greatness, 
and uh, and some of the videos, some of the information that you did not hear on mainstream news, and how uh, the citizens, well, not, the subjects of the UK are claiming to be deplorable. <laughs> yeah, you're not. They're not going to play that for you. So we'll talk about that as well as this uh, bomb dropping with social media and the antitrust. Absolutely, guys. Donald Trump is moving forward, or his administration is moving forward with looking into Facebook, Google, Twitter, all the antitrust coming out of Silicon Valley. And then we'll wrap the show up with uh, some information touching on uh, a little bit of Spygate stuff, as well as the big bomb, guys, Paul Manafort. My heart breaks for the guy. Uh, We'll go over what he was uh, charged with, the crimes he was charged with, and then... uh, Talk about whether he's legitimate. He should be at Rikers Island, of all places. So as we start off with some really good news coming out of the uh, Trump administration, thank God for Trump standing up to fake news, standing up to the Democrats and not backing down, and justice uh, being served. This at WATSPN 1013, our good friend Jean, she tweeted out, Pelosi and House Dems filed suit in April saying Trump was stealing from appropriated funds by moving $6.7 billion from other projects toward border wall construction. Breaking news! Trump wins! Uh, Fed Judge Trevor McFadden threw out the House Democrat lawsuit to block emergency border wall funding relocation. $6.7 billion back for the wall for and at Cat the Hammer won our good friend as well. Winning, winning. I love winning. <laughs> and this is what, folks, this is what it's all about. Donald Trump uh, uh, building the wall, keeping Americans safe. This judge gets it, dismisses the House Democrats' lawsuit against Donald Trump, challenging him for relocating money to build the border. Folks, this is the Democrat Party. This will be wrapped around their neck. This will hang for them forever for not wanting to protect Americans, not wanting to protect, uh, you could also call it out as protecting illegals as well. It'll keep them from coming to the border, knowing that there's not a chance or the chance of getting over you know, a 30-foot wall, a pregnant woman or a woman with uh, children is not going to attempt to do that. That's what this is. This is winning for both sides. This is winning for uh, South America, and this is winning for us here in America to keep us safe. Thank you, President Trump. Uh, Paul Rhino Ryan couldn't get it done. Uh, Lindsey Graham couldn't get it done. Mitch McConnell couldn't. I'm telling you, we had all three branches. uh, We had all three. Uh, Nothing. Couldn't get it done. Has to take Donald Trump when the executive order has to take Donald Trump to, to battle these Democrats in the courts and winning. This is a great, huge win uh, so early in this campaign for 2020. This is a very big win. You've got to talk to this about your friends and family. And uh, somebody tweet this show out to Ann Coulter, at Ann Coulter. Yeah, somebody tweet the show out to her because she's a knucklehead. She ain't got nothing. Yeah, just all kinds of hate and anger for our president. And Donald Trump is getting pushed back from all sides. Republicans, Democrats, uh, media, everybody, everything is getting pushed back and he's still getting it done. And this article broke today at the Washington Times. ICE to ramp up deportation of illegal immigrant families. Acting director says it could change incentives spurring migrant surge. So before uh, families were considered off limits for deportation. What? That doesn't make any damn sense. If you're illegal, you're illegal, whether you're a family or not a family. This is just insane. The Republicans are allowing this. The Democrats are allowing this. And our president, Donald Trump, is not allowing this anymore. Stop this nonsense. Uh, I, I always believed that we had laws on the books. Follow the laws on the books. Well, now we're starting to find out those laws on the books by these Democrats and Republicans are horrendous laws on the books that should be changed and revisited. Uh, so uh, ICE director, acting ICE director said, nope, if you're a family or not a family, it doesn't matter. You will now face deportation. Thank you, sir, for stepping it up and keeping America safe. Uh, th- this crisis is beyond manageable. 
way beyond manageable. It's to the point to where they can't even put people in jails because there's no jails. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats withholding funds, withholding money on purpose to create, you talk about a manufactured crisis, to create, to manufacture the crisis on the border. This is just a playbook out of the Democrat Party's uh, 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 dirty secret black book. We saw it for eight straight years with Barack Hussein Obama. This is the same kind of tactics that he did, and it's out of control. And other great news that you're not going to hear. Donald Trump tweeted this out. Big news. As I promised two weeks ago, the first shipment of LNG, liquid natural gas, has just left Cameron LNG export facility in Louisiana. Not only have thousands of jobs been created in the U.S., we're shipping freedom and opportunity abroad. This is all we needed. We just needed a deal maker in the office to make great deals on behalf of we the people. No more politicians uh, 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 promising and placating to us and then wind up doing absolutely nothing or doing the opposite. This is what we needed. We needed a businessman, Donald J. Trump, to make America great again. Folks, it's going to be up to you and up to me to continue to keep America great again, just like right here at New Right Network and the original series, Smith TV, your host, Brian Smith. Again, in the link in the description below, check it out. There's three different ways where you can get involved and help us help Donald Trump to continue to make America great again by getting out the real news, real time, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. So jump down in the show notes and click one of the buttons, the Patreon, uh, catch me outside at the cash the cash button or the PayPal's, any, whatever's easiest for you guys. Um, and as we talk about fake news, we've got fake news on display, just crazy nonsense stuff. And we showed you the video of this yesterday where the pastor uh, in Virginia was praying over Donald Trump, praying for him. Uh, just just an absolute blessing. And now we get Politico at an app. Anna loves Trump. Politico falsely claims pastor apologizes for Trump prayer. Politico falsely claims pastor apologize for Trump prayer. Congregants support him. This by Breitbart News and her comments. OMG, Politico, you're so hard up. Now you're tanking. A pastor's message is apologizing for prayer with president. We saw it. We saw the video. I played the video here for you guys. This was a, a, an honest to goodness, heartfelt uh, prayer from this pastor. And that's what we need to continue to do as Christians. Continue to pray for each other. Continue to pray for our country. Con continue to pray for the safety of our president. And, uh, and, and pray that he continues to have the ability and the energy to continue to make America great again. This is what we need, uh, and as Christians, this is what we need to do. And our good friend at Dr. D. Hennon, who is running in Ohio for the 13th Congressional District, he tweeted out, I am a Christian, conservative, Republican candidate for Congress. I support life. Hashtag Hennon for Ohio 2020. And he tweeted out Robert Jeffries' video on Fox News. Trump, who began to reverse that trend. And what has the left in a real panic is they see their most sacred belief, the right to kill children in the womb for whatever reason, they see that under attack and they are absolutely determined to take this president out. And that is why so many Christians today are standing with this president. Not because we think he's perfect. None of us is perfect. But we stand with this president because we believe he's right about about the most important issues in life. And I happen to believe that if the left is successful in taking this president out, we will have lost perhaps the last opportunity we have as a nation to reverse the downward trajectory of this nation. And that's why we're praying today. Thank you so much, Jeffries. That is absolutely right. Folks, we are right now at a precipice, at a point in time uh, in this country where we have the ability to call murder, murder. Abortion is absolute murder. Uh, we're talking about the very moment that the sperm and the egg meet and create its own unique DNA. That is the moment of conception. I don't care how it happened in a sense of what the act was, whether it was rape or it doesn't matter how it happened. It's the fact that it did happen. And because a, a, a heinous act, a violent act, an act uh, of rape or incest that will have you uh, thrown in jail and locked up, uh, punished, because of that act happening 
And it happens on such a small fraction of a scale. I think it's just a small percentage of a scale of women uh, that go to Planned Parenthood. I believe it's less than 1%. They go to Planned Parenthood, say that they were either uh, uh, raped or incest. It's less than 1%. Punishing the victim, which is the child. The baby is the victim. Punishing the victim with death is wrong. Uh, on all accounts, it's wrong because it's a human life and our constitution is there to protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This child needs to be protected. Uh, Republicans have uh, put it up for vote 50 times to protect the baby a born alive act where a botched abortion and a baby comes out and it's still alive. The born alive act 50 times Republicans has put it to the vote and 50 times Democrats have voted no. Folks, this right here, Dr. D. Hennon, he's got a good following here on social media. I think he absolutely has a very, very good chance of uh, tackling the 13th uh, Congressional District, standing up for Americans, standing up for, for innocent children, innocent babies in the womb, and helping to keep America great again. We need to elect individuals like this. I've been in talks with him, and I, I think he's a fantastic candidate. Uh, definitely vote for him. Uh, so, something else we talked about yesterday, but I'm glad that it came up at IBC 360. Our good friend, Lauren G. Uh, she got a red pill back there in the back. Check this out. They got the red pill back in the back. It's ironic. So, somebody asked an old, older individual, asked me the other day, what, what does red pill mean? I was taken back. I was like, okay, let me to you. Let me just explain you something. As she tweets out, what's up with all of the white hate? Demon POS journalists like this are the reason for the continuous hate crimes against whites that I see all over and over again on daily uh, basis. I'm fed up. If you feel this way, get the hell out of our country. Yes, we talked about this journalist yesterday and her tweet about uh, white people having done everything wrong to her, uh, yet I'm supposed to not hate white people. This is despicable. This woman is suffering from a victimhood mentality. She's become a victocrat, a victim of society. Thank you, uh, the great uh, Larry Elder, for that one. Uh, she is definitely a victocrat. And she's, uh, she's caught up in her own way. It's like a fly hitting a window and she can't get out of her own way. She is causing, you, ma'am, are causing all of your problems. I got one, one answer for you. Go to church. <laughs> Go to church. Start, start to get away from social media. Uh, get away from uh, all the hate and the anger. Get away from the politics. Stop being a journalist for a moment and go to church and start listening uh, to, to the pastor, start praying to God. As a matter of fact, I'll pray for you. I absolutely. As a Christian, we need to do this, folks. Say a prayer for these individuals. God, please come into her life, however that possibly be. Come into her life so that she no longer is miserable. This is not political. This is real. God, please come into her life to help her with her misery and uh, and, and find the way to Christ. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Folks, it's that easy. Say a prayer for all these people. They desperately need it. The ones who have been gaslit, the ones who have been tricked, the ones who have been lied to uh, by the CNNs, MSNBCs. Matter of fact, I turned one on earlier. I, I think it was MSNBC. Uh, just awful stuff, just horrible stuff that they're spewing out. And this re reporter, and I believe a former congressional candidate uh, failed, um, is now in a fit of rage and miserable. We need to reach out to these folks as Christians. We need to reach out to them, help them so that they can have a paradigm shift like our good friend Brendan Strzok and the hashtag walkaway movement. He had a paradigm shift and he had to walk away from the Democrats because he realized over the decades, they've been lying to him. The mainstream media lying to him. That's why you come here, folks. This is the new news media, a new right networks, original series, Smith TV. Folks, this is where the real stuff is every day, Monday to Friday. Share this with your friends and your family. Tell them all about the show. And as we get into who else is spewing the hate and anger other than failed congressional uh, uh, candidates, we've got actual people in office. And this tweeted out by our good friend at Dr. D. Hannon. Birtherism was started by who? Hillary must be a racist. 
The fact is, you must be born here to be president. Why not merely clear it up with a birth certificate? Dems have asked for far more from Donald Trump. And then, then underneath is a picture of Ilhan Omar and her brother. Marriage certificate. Oh, that was a fraud. And this was to Ilhan who tweeted out about uh, Jared Kushner being interviewed. I'm telling you guys, hey, conservatives, tell Jared Kushner not to go on TV anymore. This ain't no good. But Ilhan tweeted out, the president openly campaigned on banning an entire religion from entering the country. Everyone who supports this candidacy and presidency should be asked these questions. And Jared Kutchner was being interviewed, um, MSNBC. Unfortunate, he is not prepared. Andrea Ocasio-Cortez, mm -hmm. uh, she calls, she has called President Trump a racist. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen him say or do anything that you would describe as racist or bigoted? So uh, for the answer is uh, uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, you can't not be a racist for 69 years, then run for president and be a racist. And what I'll say is that when a lot of the Democrats call the president a racist, I think they're doing uh, a, a disservice to people who suffer because of real racism in this country. Was birtherism racist? Um, look, I wasn't really involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't involved in that. I know you weren't. Mm -hmm. Was it racist? Um, look, I know who the president is, and I have not seen anything in him that is racist. So again, I was not involved in that. Okay, let's tackle this with a one-two punch. First off, Ilhan Omar, uh, Donald Trump did not ban a religion. He should. He should, and it's not a religion that you're involved in. Matter of fact, we need to pray for Ilhan Omar so that she can see the light and understand that, um, that the religion that she's been brainwashed into is a cult. Just like uh, uh, the Jones crew that goes down to uh, South America and drink the Kool-Aid and everybody died. Uh, this is Islam. Uh, it is a cult, a cult of death. It is the religion of the devil. It was started uh, based on the moon god, Baal. This, this is true. This is fact. You go back through history and it was started, um, Muhammad uh, said Allah, and this is where he got Allah from, the false god ball the moon god don't tell me don't tell me so she needs to understand that that one donald trump didn't ban a religion he should ban the cult because islam has no uh, uh footing no grounding no nothing in our roots as a country as a christian judeo-based country our the pilgrims came here to get away from you people that were looking to murder and slaughter and kill women and children, throwing homosexuals off the top of buildings, hanging them, burning them. This is Islam. We ran away from you to come here to the new world, to start our new country. God has blessed this country to become a beacon, a shining beacon of hope for the world to see. And we need to pray for these folks that are trapped in Islam so that they can find that there is real freedom in Jesus Christ through Christianity. Second part of that one-two punch. Secondly, birtherism. I guess we're talking about Barack Hussein Obama and his birth certificate. First off, Hillary Clinton started the birther movement to attack Obama, to get rid of him uh, so that she could win. Didn't work, Hillary, because then she tried to fade it off on Trump. Uh, Trump kind of slipped down in th that rabbit hole with it for a moment, but then when the fake burst, now, I'm not going that. I'm not going that. The CEO, the inventor of Photoshop, said that it was fake. Okay, well, I'm not going down that road. Donald Trump, once he saw the birth certificate, said, "Nah, it's okay. All right, good. We're done. We're done. You should have to. It is a requirement to show your birth certificate. It is a requirement to show your birth certificate." Now, for those of you who know the facts behind the birth certificate, behind uh, Barack Hussein Obama and all of that, I understand that it's a massive issue. However, Barack Obama is not president anymore. He's not, not president. And uh, the Democrats are going to circle the wagons that are covered for him. This is a losing argument. I'm with you on this. Or maybe I'm not. <laughs> Let me tell you what really I, I my personal belief. Uh, Barack Obama had to fake the birth certificate 
I say he was born here in America by two American citizens, and he faked the birth certificate to cover for his real father, Frank Marshall Davis. Frank Marshall Davis, hardcore uh, communist, card-carrying communist, uh, really, really bad guy. And I believe that they had to cover for that, and they used uh, this other story to cover for it. Uh, some guy from another country, uh, and he was born in, not Kenya, no, it, maybe. Now that he was born in uh, Hawaii, folks, whatever it be, I know for a fact he was raised by a card-carrying communist. Uh, also, uh, his father, Frank Marshall Davis, was also friends with Loretta Lynch's father growing up. So that's why Loretta Lynch and Obama, that's why they know each other so well. Because they were raised in Chicago together, guys. All right. With that, get rid of all that. We'll keep on moving on uh, with the fake news. And this is our friend at Zionist Girl 18. Arab mentality is to play the victim, even if you are the perpetrator, called projection. Arabs started wars against Israel. They say they are victims. Now in the U.S., meet Hodan Hassan, newly elected Democrat Minnesota House of Representatives, describes how Muslims are the victims. Um, open a new experience, a new eye-opening for me in this country that call themselves Muslims, for we have... Um, experience money prejudice against us. The U.S. has changed after 9-11. Um, there's been many policies that has been created uh, after 9-11, such as you were, um, you know, subject to um, second screening when you're at the airport, or, um, you know, they, they, anybody can pick on you when you're at the airport because your last name is Mohammed or Hassan. Uh, lucky me, my last name is Hassan. Um, so uh, a lot of ch things have changed, whether it's schools, uh, whether it's laws, whether it's, um, you know, everyday experience. And uh, we live to experience that. It's, it has been a lot of negative experience, but there's also positive experience, too. There are people who are fighting against that. There are people who are fighting against Islamophobia, which um, started after 9-11 which still continues and to be a problematic for the people that live in this country. Islamophobia. I'm sorry. We are not afraid of Islam. There is no fear of Islam. We know what Islam is and we call it out here on the show. Every single time we get, we get the opportunity. I thank you for putting this video together so that we could showcase that Islam is a, 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 a cult of slavery this woman, anyone dressed in a hijab, any woman who has to cover their entire body from head to toe, uh, this is uh, mental abuse to force women to not be allowed to uh, make themselves look beautiful or wear beautiful clothing and beautiful dresses and sh skirts and shorts and t-shirts. Folks, this happens right here. I've been born and raised on the west side of Cincinnati, y'all. And for those of you who are new on the show, uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> And uh, it's a conservative, any town, USA, uh, you run into your brother at the grocery store or your mom at the pharmacy, and you got friends that work at the pharmacy. So it's all close net on the West side, uh, lots of family and being raised here my entire life. Uh, I left and moved out to California uh, right after nine 11. So this kind of hits home to me. So I moved out to California right after nine 11 and I didn't come back until 2012. Well, lo and behold, my entire life growing up on the West Side, I've never seen a Hispanic individual on the West Side of Cincinnati. I've never seen, it's primarily uh, black and white Americans, and I've never seen uh, Muslims. Matter of fact, I've never seen Muslims until I went out to California and I saw them everywhere. Fast forward to 2012, I come back to Cincinnati, the West Side of Cincinnati, and uh, we're down at the park. It's just, it's a water park. It's a, it's a neat little place where the kids can play. We're down at the water park. It's got to be at least 90 degrees out. And in Cincinnati, 90 degrees with 110% humidity is sweltering hot. I mean, just you can't keep enough water in you. And I see a Muslim family walking up to the water park, the little tiny children running into the water, the dad with shorts and a T-shirt on, big heavy set guy, he's eating pretty well, and the wife covered head to toe in all black. 
what she had a screen door on and everything head to toe in black in 90 degree weather i was waiting to the on the ready on the dial to call 911 because this woman's gonna pass out from a heat stroke folks i'm not kidding that that's slavery that's torture that's islam sorry we should ban uh the cult of islam we should Donald Trump hasn't done that, but we should. And so what can we do to combat this uh, takeover of our Congress by Islam? This at Francis underscore 712. Minnesotian, you have a beautiful patriotic Daniela will be running against Ilhan Omar. Please retweet. And down in the description below, click the link for the full show notes. And this will take you directly to Daniela Stella. She's at Star Daniela. Uh, This is her Twitter page. Absolutely a must follow. If you know anybody in Minnesota, you need to send them the link of this great patriot to help to oust Islam in our Congress. This is an absolute must. We've got to expose Islam for what it is. It's a cult. It's not a religion. It is a uh, forced slavery for women. And FGM, which is uh, just horrendous female genital mutilation. Yes, I'm going to say it. We've got to call this out. This is what they do to women. As young babies, they uh, remove the clitoris and and scar them for life so that they can never, ever experience that beautiful joy, that, that, that gift that God has given a man and a woman. That's a gift from God, folks. Think about that. A gift given to a man, a gift given to a woman, united in marriage, an incredible emotional bonding gift, removed, severed from a woman so that She will live the rest of her life never, ever experiencing that God-given gift. That's Islam on display. And as we have our fantastic president, at real Donald Trump, just arrived in the UK. The only problem is CNN is the primary source of news available from the US. After watching it for a short while, I turned it off. All negative and so much fake news. Very bad for US. Big ratings drop. Why doesn't owner AT&T do something? (laughs) Fantastic, Trump. Call it out as you see it. We call it out here as we see it. We talked about that yesterday on the show, AT&T being the the largest carrier, the biggest, largest carrier by far in the United States. Number two doesn't even come close in the United States. And failing CNN, just tagging along. I guess AT&T just using it as a tax write-off. Some might call it a tax shelter. Uh, CNN loses a uh, million, 10 million, $100 million a year. AT&T says, all right, fine. We just won't pay $100 million in taxes and sticks you, the taxpayer, with the loss of CNN. This is unbelievable calling out fake news. So as Donald Trump is in the UK uh, visiting with the dignitaries and uh, heads of state, there is real news coming out. There's a lot of fake news, but we've got some real news coming out uh, because we got Donald Trump tweeting a lot of this stuff out. And this is Donald Trump U.S. state visit. For those of you audio only, it's video uh, montage of Donald Trump in the U.K. with dignitaries, parades, marches, hanging out with the Queen. See Milani there as well. Just incredible. Awesome. Thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, President Trump, for posting this up on social media so that we, the people, can see what's really going on because this isn't happening. Donald Trump touring a church. Just fantastic. We don't get that. I don't know where you could go to get that. Donald Trump tweeting that out. Got to be careful, social media. Man, Donald Trump, speak the truth to power. And this at Megavolt001, a very good one to follow. Lots of great articles and great tweets. 
Uh, he tweets this one out by Breitbart.com. State banquet. Queen honors UK-US alliance. Trump celebrates shared values of freedom and sovereignty. As you can see, the two of them are laughing. Fake news doesn't want you to know about this, but Donald Trump having a great time with the Queen. The Queen having a great time with Donald Trump, just uh, laughing and talking. And what were they talking about? Folks, <laughs> fake news media is not going to tell you how great Donald Trump is making not only America great, but also helping other countries. Donald Trump sits down with heads of state. Trump prepared to make bilateral trade deal if the UK ditches the EU shackles. This at Breitbart.com. This is one of two tweets from Donald Trump. London part of trip is going really well. The Queen and the entire royal family have been fantastic. The relationship with the United Kingdom is very strong. Tremendous crowds of well-wishers and people that love our country. Haven't seen any protests yet, but I'm sure the fake news will be working hard to find them. Great love all around. Also, big trade deal is possible once the UK gets rid of the shackles. Already starting talks. It is fantastic. I couldn't be more excited about Donald Trump uh, trying to uh, persuade the UK politicians into Brexit. Get away from Brexit. That thing needs needs to come down and uh, and and just form an alliance with successful capitalist countries and not the socialist, globalist, uh, one world order, uh, uh, communist type ideologies, which we've seen uh, wreck and ruin entire countries. We see it here in America in cities like uh, in Southern California. You got Compton. You got Lynn. See, they call Linwood. They call Lynn Hood. Because that's how bad it is. Los Angeles is absolutely being destroyed by Democrat policies, the socialist ideologies that are anti-Christian. These are anti-Christian uh, teaching where you must take responsibility, personal responsibility for each and everything that you do. And when you do, then you can pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You don't need the government. To, uh, to, to give all these handouts. And we remember under Barack Obama, the eight years of reign of terror, where, where people were on uh, food stamps and welfare, like the likes we've never, ever had before, surpassing 51% of all Americans uh, receiving some kind of government uh, subsidy, some kind of government aid. This is what we're uh, talking about that is absolutely wrong. So join hands with America and move forward. This at Trump underscore girl underscore USA, Patriot for Freedom. This is another this is another one to follow, folks. If you want real information in real time, she tweets out, we had zero hashtag MSM positive coverage for our POTUS visiting the UK, even though primarily for the 75th D-Day anniversary which is profound for America and the UK, CNN, Anna Navarro, even said she apologized to Great Britain. Really? What about Fox News? What about CBS, MSNBC, NBC, ABC? And she retweeted out at Herbert underscore L underscore Reed. Watch CNN's Navarro apologize to the UK for Trump's visit. This is absolutely despicable. This is disgusting fake news on CNN. She was never a Republican. No Republican would ever act like this. No true conservative Republican, uh, not necessarily have to be Christian, but the fact that you go all out on this president shows the, 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 the hate and the anger that lives inside you. And that's not who we are. This is not America. Just as I... Uh, I told uh, George Papadopoulos and his wife, it is just a crying shame that her first visit to America had to be the Democrats and the deep state and the FBI just literally attempting to destroy and wreck their lives. Anna Navarro, you're part of that wreckage. How disgusting. We'll show this on uh, all the time. Exposing the fake news right here, folks. Smith TV. And right, I was doing show prep, last minute stuff. Uh, my cousin sent me this video that is going viral in the UK. And again, in the link in the description below, at Smith Radio, my cousin Carrie Smith, that's one to follow. Woman videos herself stabbing the Trump baby balloon. 
in the UK and gets arrested. I'm going in for it. I'm going to pop the bloody thing. I'm going. Yeah. 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 What the fuck you did? Did it. That's a disgrace. It's a national disgrace. The president of the United States is the best president ever. Shame on you. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. There with the uh, Trump diaper baby balloon, uh, the balloon fairly uh, smaller than uh, the usual ones. There's been tit for tat with uh, the mayor of London, the Muslim mayor of London. And um, <laughs> now these knuckleheads wearing red hats and hanging out with the, it's an absolute insult to uh, America and to everything America has done for you guys. And here's the real news, guys, at EMC and Rory. Nine, it's great to see that people in the United Kingdom are showing respect and are fans that like President Donald Trump. So far, it's been a great start to a three-day visit in Britain and the United Kingdom. We love Trump! Great deplorables of the United Kingdom. I welcome you with open arms, brothers and sisters. Absolutely. This is what it's about. There must have been uh, 10,000, I don't know, 5,000, thousands of people there. That camera swept from all the way to the front stage and turned all the way back around. Thousands of, of United Kingdom's uh, people assembled, uh, chanting Donald Trump. Uh, telling uh, if President Trump can hear that we are here with you. We love you, Donald Trump. Trump knows the real news. He sees it on social media. And folks, now you guys are getting to see it here as well. This is what's real. There are a lot of people around. The we even saw when Donald Trump went to Japan. <laughs> These Japanese boys were going to the, the hair salon to get their hair dyed blonde and get a haircut that looked like Donald Trump. <laughs> This this is great stuff. It's beautiful stuff that the media doesn't want you to see, but you can see it right here, folks. And as I said, there's some good news down the pipeline for us. Uh, this at Super Yay Yay D I Z E. I stand with Trump. Facebook tumbles after FTC opens competition probe. Twitter stock took a beating too. It's a shame. Big tech was warned. Oh wait, they were. But guess they thought Donald Trump wasn't serious. They're going to go through with antitrust probe. And this, our good friend CC, at chat by CC, LOL. I fear my Twitter account is like the movie Groundhog Day. In the last several weeks, I gain and lose approximately the same amount of followers. How is this possible? Answer, it is not possible. It's clearly being manipulated I know. I talk to you guys all the time on social media. I, I sympathize. I empathize with you. Uh, my account has been locked since for, forever. I've been stuck at 22,300 followers for, for, for almost a year. I watch my account as I gain 150 followers and then lose 150 followers. I, I see people show me screenshots all the time where all of a sudden their account, this is a trick they do. Folks, if somebody, uh, looks like they're not following you anymore and they're a MAGA group, MAGA person, don't automatically unfollow them. Go look at their account. If it says they're following zero people, there is a an algorithm that locks their account, shuts it down, makes it look like they're following nobody. And then within a couple of days, it's restored. That's to make you think they unfollowed everybody. That's not true. That's not happening. Uh, but Twitter wants to make it look like it's happening. Uh, CC, I'm with you. I'm with you, girl. This has been a frustrating ride as well, but check it out, folks. Parlor. I keep telling you, there's a new a new uh, platform out there. Parlor.com down in the description below at uh, Smith TV on Parlor. And then I promise you a little bit of uh, Spygate updates. Hillary Clinton has no filter. This woman is absolutely crazy. She tweets out yesterday. I don't know who needs to hear this, 
but the president is not above the law. Uh, okay, as our good friend at John McGeever 70, Hillary Clinton's campaign has not responded in 18 months to Senate Judiciary Committee's request for documents and answers about the dossier. And Hillary Clinton has the nerve to lecture Trump that he is not above the law. We know this story. It's a broken record story. We know the answers. We know what happened. We know that you did it, Hillary Clinton. This is pure projection from the left. Hillary Clinton projecting out loud on social media. Uh, the, the day that she gets indicted, the day that she's arrested will be a beautiful, glorious day. And now we get into a very sad part of the story with Paul Manafort. At Gabriella R613, a New York state judge ordered the transfer at the request of New York City District Attorney Cy Vance Jr., a Democrat. Talk about witch hunt. Yet de Blasio's wife loses $850 million of New York taxpayer money and she walks free. Perfect example of dim hypocrisy. Yeah, that story's been going around. I don't know what's going on with Bill de Blasio's uh, wife, and I don't know how she had the ability to almost have control of a billion dollars, but apparently that's been missing, and nobody seems to care. But Paul Manafort, uh, this is really disturbing, that they're now transfer transferring him to Rikers Island. He will be put into a, a solitary confinement, and if he's not put into solitary confinement, uh, the man's not going to live very long. This is very, very bad. This is for hardened uh, uh, murderers and rapists. and crim uh, Paul Man Manafort, according to Wikipedia, was charged with various financial crimes, including tax evasion, bank fraud, money laundering. There were 18 criminal charges, including five falsifications of income tax return, four failures to file foreign bank account reports, four accounts of bank fraud, and five counts of bank fraud conspiracy. Okay. Yes, that all has to do with money, bank fraud, conspiracy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why he's going to jail. But Rikers Island? Come on, man. This is just really, really sad. It's very frustrating that this is how this is starting to play out. He's going to Rikers Island. Uh, Bill de Blasio's wife loses a billion dollars. Hillary Clinton bilks taxpayers for hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into her Clinton uh, Foundation, losing hundreds of millions of dollars while she was Secretary of State. Yes, this is the hypocrisy. She was working with Russia, getting money from Russia, getting money and help from the Ukraine to then uh, find the dirt, or the black book they called it, on Paul Manafort, and this individual in their State Department on audio saying. All right, here with a full report. The Hill's John Solomon. John Solomon uh, gets the lead billing tonight with his breaking story. All right, I want to get to specifically, John, the tape recording released by a member of the Ukrainian parliament. Let's talk about the tape recording. Evidence. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know much about it because it's floating around Ukraine. But we do know the general prosecutor of Ukraine, <clears throat> our equivalent of the attorney general, came on our show this morning and said the following. There's enough evidence for me to open up a criminal investigation into the illicit effort by a Ukrainian to try to influence the United States election in favor of Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. That's a profound statement coming from the top law enforcement official of Ukraine. Why is it important? There's a court in Ukraine that's already concluded that uh, Ukrainian officials leaked Paul Manafort's financial records to try to sway the U.S. election. You haven't heard anything about that in the American press, but that ruling occurred recently. Then a parliamentary member comes out and says, I have a tape of these law enforcement officials saying they did it specifically to help Hillary Clinton. That becomes the foundation of the Ukrainian investigation. You, you have talked to people that have heard this tape, correct? Uh, well, the, uh, the prosecutor himself has heard the tape and said it was important enough, uh, good enough evidence to warrant opening the investigation. So the tape, the court ruling, mm -hmm. the top prosecutor in Ukraine says there was a foreign power, us, Ukraine, trying to influence the U.S. election to help Hillary Clinton. That's the news here today. We are going to help Hillary Clinton win. Joe Biden, fire, getting, a, getting an official fired because he was attempting to investigate him and his son's dealings in the Ukraine, Russia, all the, all the dirty dealings that got on the back end. Yes, this is the Democrats on full alert.
that you guys are being exposed for being the crooks that you are. And this at a red pill report, a very, very good one to follow. Good friend of ours, esteemed NSA whistleblower, Bill Benny says he has evidence that DNC was not hacked. The Mueller report and the Rosenstein indictment is all based on one giant lie that Russia hacked the DNC and that Trump worked with Russia to make that happen. That is all a lie. We know it. Now we have a whistleblower. This at the gatewaypundit.com. Roger Stone is requesting full proof that the Russians hacked the DNC server as was reported by the Mueller report. He claims if the Russians didn't hack the DNC, his case must be dismissed. 100% true. This entire thing is based on a lie. Roger Stone, the two people that will be cleared and not see any kind of jail time are the two that fought back. Carter Page and Roger Stone fighting back the deep state, calling them liars and standing up to them. A lot of the other people didn't have the money or the ability to do that. The intimidation tactics, the, the things that the FBI did, the Roger Stone in the middle of the night, uh, his wife is deaf and uh, uh, beating down his front door with guns blazing, had boats in the back, uh, police boats in the back, coming up the back door, guns. Yeah, this is the intimidation tactics. This is Gestapo type stuff that happened in Russia. This is not America. This needs to make sure that this absolutely never, ever happens again. And this at status coup, NSA whistleblower and longtime intel analysis, Bill Benny. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the, the problem with the Mueller report and the uh, Rosenstein indictment is it's all based on lies. I mean, the fact that they're, they're still lying about the saying that the, uh, the DNC was hacked by the Russians and the Russians gave it to WikiLeaks. Well, we had some of our people and, and our group, the VIPs, the Veteran Intelligence Professionals, look at the data that WikiLeaks posted on the DNC data. I mean, they actually posted the DNC data. So we went and looked at that and said, uh, gee, this data has all of it uh, from the DNC, from the late May material, the, the DNC Hillary emails, all had a FAT file property of it. Now, that FAT file foreign allocation table format is what a software program does when it reads it to a storage device like a thumb drive or a CD-ROM. And it rounds off the last modified time to the nearest even number. So all of them had that property. So that said that that entire set of data was read to a thumb drive or a CD-ROM, then physically transported. Now this is what uh, Kim.com is saying, is what us Julian Assange basically was inferring. Others have been saying the same things, uh, you know, some of the illicit recordings, like for example, if Cy Hurst said that, other people are saying there's an FBI report saying that that's the way it happened. And so all of that data, or, or at least positive information, and we've seen nothing positive from the government to assert differently. <clears throat> in fact, uh, <clears throat> the Mueller group didn't even want to talk to us in the VIPs who had the evidence, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> and could show them the evidence. They didn't even want to talk to us because they didn't want to hear it. It's contrary to their narrative. We've been saying it here for years, folks. What really happened? Just a quick revision, just real quick. Uh, Seth Rich was an IT guy for the DNC and supported Bernie Sanders. Absolutely was a, a Bernie Sanders, huge Bernie Sanders supporter. Uh, then once Bernie Sanders dropped out, uh, the DNC transferred him over to the Hillary Clinton campaign as an IT guy. What he witnessed there in the Clinton campaign, he found out that Bernie Sanders was on the dole also found out that Hillary Clinton was taking an uh, exuberant amount of money, I think it was $84 million that was then taken and distributed amongst all the DNC offices across the country. And then within 24 to 48 hours, all that money then will wind back up into the Hillary Clinton campaign through the Clinton Foundation. He saw all of the cheating, the lying, the stealing. He also found out that Hillary Clinton had a... Uh, uh, the polling booth where you would go and vote for Hillary Clinton. There was one polling booth that was on her website to where you could go. Okay, find my polling booth on Hillary's website. And I could go and vote for Hillary at this site. But there was also a second site that was set up by the DNC. The DNC had a polling site. So at the end of the day, they would take Hillary Clinton's polling site, the DNC polling site, and put, the, put them together. That's why Hillary Clinton won. That's where all the extra votes came from 
because people that wanted Hillary would vote. People that didn't, uh, you know, wanted Hillary but didn't go to the website would vote, and they would combine them. Seth Rich found all that out, downloaded all the information, and was exposed to WikiLeaks, and then was on his way to testify to talk to the FBI where he was intercepted with some bad guys. And uh, I, I'm hearing reports that, uh, one, the cell phone is now lost. The cell phone had information on it that we could have uh, done a lot of forensics with that, that he had. It wasn't stolen. It was actually lost. Evidence was lost by the cops, the D.C. cops. No real investigation. Uh, some people are saying that Donna Brazier actually showed up at the hospital to talk with him before he died. We do know for a fact that that uh, a day prior to this happening, uh, people at the DNC heard, audibly heard, him and Donna arguing and screaming at each other from her office the day prior. No investigations, no follow-ups. The family's being intimidated and told Sean Hannity to shut up and not go proceed with any of this. Uh, they didn't say they were being intimidated, but I'm telling you they're being intimidated. I promise you that they are being intimidated to shut up and not talk about their son's death anymore because it's going to expose the deep state. Woo, and again, folks, you're watching New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith, giving you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news, exposing the fake politicians, and giving you the real news and the real politicians to vote for that have America first agenda in, in mind, uh, that will back this president, that will actually serve the people. That's what we're talking about here uh, for, for Tuesday Thoughts. Guys, have an incredible evening. I'll see you back here tomorrow for Wednesday Wisdom. All right, peace out. Pelosi from San Francisco. Nice. For the moment, I like this better because I like darker tide. So, um, no offense to either brand, I would say this is the tide. You've been listening to New Right Network, mobilizing, countering, energizing. Online at newrightnetwork.com.